this computer recording. Hi, Natalie. How are you doing today? I'm okay. How are you? I'm good. Good. It's, it's uh, been a bit busy around here. My daughter graduated from elementary school yesterday. She starts high school in the fall. Uh oh. Yeah. So life continues, even though we're locked down. Life, That's right. That's life right. continues. Yeah. And you're working from home as well, right? Yeah, I've been teleworking. I've been one of the lucky ones to be able to telework. Um, it's been crazy. Um, I'm a person that suffers from insomnia. So actually, this has helped me a little bit to be right. able to spend just a little bit and then walk up to the kitchen uh, and start my day on two computers. So um, I used to think, could I ever work from home? And now I know that I can. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Would you prefer it or would you like to go back to the office? I actually like working from home. Um, I do miss seeing the people. Um, during this time, I, I have gone into the office every so often just to make sure that everything is working because I'm the executive assistant and office manager for the company. So, you know, I had to make sure the toner was, everything, all the computers were working and the machines were working and they had enough toilet paper or whatever in the office. So, um, but I do like working from home. I feel like I get more done. <laughs> yeah, funny, right? I think. If we have the t if if we get to develop our time, we're more productive. Right. So productivity exactly. as opposed to what you clock in. Exactly. You're exactly. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. It. So I know you through the Recording Academy. We're both Grammy voting members, and um, I realized that I don't know exactly where in the U.S. you live. I live in Kensington, Maryland, which is uh, thirty minutes away from D.C., Washington, D.C. Wow. I noticed when I, I've been to Washington on tour a couple times and there's no billboards or anything anywhere. No. Are there, do you have billboards in Maryland or is it too close? Uh, no, we don't have any billboards. Yeah. No. There could be, there could be, I had to think be, about it. No, we don't have any billboards. Yeah, because there could be no advertising to the, right. to the people who work for, right. the, for the country. Back in the day before, um, well, before I was in my 40s, um, they used to have billboards around here because I... My sister put me in this group that's part of the small town where I, I live and where I grew up. And I saw billboards, but they don't have them anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, interesting. Interesting. So you have, um, uh, I'm realizing most of the people I know, um, the reason I wanted to talk with you today is because you're an amazing, interesting, uh, inspirational person of color I know. And I think that a lot of people don't get out of their bubble. So. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I do have some black women in my life, but I really say I know some black men through music, but I don't, I don't, uh, there are no black men in my life. I don't live in a very, I live in a very diverse community, but mostly we have Asian, Persian, in East Indian, First Nations, but there's not a lot of black people in my world. So I think it's great for uh, the people I know, you know, or even just people I don't know to get to know other people. You know what I mean? Muy importante, yes. <laughs> Muy importante. Because I, I think when it comes down to it, um, I'm hopeful when it comes down to it, that, especially with the white fragility out there, that all these people who don't think they're racist and they're just so uncomfortable with the idea of being called a racist, right. um, if they, I, I think when it came down to it on the street, they'd be friendly to someone who looked different than them, right. but they just don't understand that they're supporting systematic racism. And exactly. So I want to... I want to help break that down through getting people to know the real life stories of, of people of color and things that they face. So thank you for joining me today. Oh, thank you for having me. Yeah. So you have a new record that has come out and the record is called, where do we go from here? And I, I think it's really amazing that you wrote and recorded several songs last year that are very relevant to right now. We kneel hands up. I am, you know, I just, um, what, what can you tell me about what inspired those songs? And um, when I was looking at the world's issues last year and um, this year, because I recorded a couple before I released it uh, this year, I was looking at the world and I was internalizing everything that was going on in the world. Um, like I, I do suffer from depression. Um, I didn't want to perform anymore. I didn't know what road to take, but I knew as an artist, I just didn't want to make music just to make music. I want to be an effective player. I want to be remembered for somebody that tried to do something, that tried to make a difference in the world. And so 
I had to really come up with ideas and themes for the album. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, what do I write about? And I'm, a, I'm an open book. Um, I'm not afraid to write or to sing about things that have happened to me in my life personally. So, you know, the first song is ca called I Told You No, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, a story about my own personal sexual assault. Um, Heroes was based on, it's a different take on the sh school shootings. And oh, so okay. based on one of the stories about the young man, Hispanic uh, teenager, who was the lone person to be killed in one of the shootings and he risked his life to save um, the school. And so the song is basically, this is not how heroes should be made in the sense that this is a kid. He should be living his life. He shouldn't have to risk his life to save all these people so that they can live. I mean, he wanted to be just like his father. He wanted so people can own guns. He should right. be living his life just because people yeah. want to own guns. Exactly. Um, and so, it's interesting because that, that song was reviewed in Music Connection magazine. And he said, yeah, Natalie takes a different spin on it. She takes a different take on it, which is interesting. Um, I Am, which is so ironic. I, you're, you're right. I mean, a lot of the songs on the album pertain to everything today is about my own internalizing about racism and how it affects me and how I'm not going to give into it. And you know how some of the words are, you look at the color of my skin. Um, and assume all the wrong things. You would rather listen to the noise. Um, mm -hmm. And so many people, rather than trying to understand things, they'll just give in to whatever people say about you and just go about the day. Well, you know, they or sometimes, you know, the whole story that, well, they eat, only eat fried chicken or they only drink Kool-Aid or, you know, they're all on Section 8. In fact, the company that I work for redevelop redevelops affordable housing. I and mean, there's a lot of people that live in, a, in affordable housing. And they do a lot of good work and they build community centers within them and help the community. And so, and it's not all black people that are in there. And then I wrote a song called Numb. And Numb is basically about school shootings as well and about the worldview about gun violence and the fact that it happens every day and everybody goes about their day like nothing happens at all. And so you become so numb to it. Too, totally. Yeah. You become so numb to it. Oh, another school shooting. Oh, there's a shooting. Oh, well, that's Isn't it. that heartbreaking. What would you like for dinner? Yeah. And, 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 you, and you're just like, too, you grieve for two minutes and you go about your day because you see that nothing's being done. I'm, I'm not a proponent for people not to have guns because I, think, I, I don't think that you can just say, well, we're just gonna take guns away from gun owners. I believe in, in sitting at a table and compromising. I don't think anybody needs an AK-15. If they want that, they can put a war. You don't yeah. need that. No. But if you want something for self-defense in the home and stuff like that, I mean, I have to be honest with the way that the climate is today. I've been talking to my friend. I said, how do I obtain a gun? Yeah, right. Because I want to have, I, I don't want bullets in it. Maybe the bullets are in another room and stuff like that. But I feel like I need to protect myself. And I think that's very sad. Um, and then I did a song called Tired. Now that, that came about because I was trying to figure out songs to write. And one day I just woke up and I looked at myself in the mirror. And I said, I am just so tired. And then from that point on, I start. okay, so the song is called Tired. And I talk, I talk about everything that I'm tired about. You know, racism, um, just the, the fires were burning at the time, you know, environmental issues. I was just so tired. And then, and then I wrote the song Mother Earth, which is about the environment. Um, I, I made that one a little bit cinematic. And then I did one called The Forgotten, which was, is about um, homeless vets. Mm. What Would You Do For Love is about immigration. That basically was about putting yourself in their shoes um, not trying to change people's minds, but for once, sit in somebody else's shoes, feel what they feel, understand why they need to do what they need to do um, to get here. You Don't Know Me is a song about the fact that people don't really get to know you anymore. They just yeah. either want to take stuff away from you or they want you to help them and then they walk away. Um, Hands Up is obviously about, you know, uh, police brutality and the fact that a lot of uh, black people and, and some other races as well have been shot when their hands have been up. Um, Love Your Own Power is a female empowerment song written by myself and Mike Greenlee. Um, this House is a song written by myself and Mike, Michael Peloso, and that's about immigration. 
um, We Rise was another female empowerment song. There are a lot of songs on this album. Yeah. And, this, and then the Letting Go um, is a song that we did uh, a year or two ago that I added on the album um, because in the end, you have to let go. You have to go let go maybe of your own beliefs sometimes and just sit at a table and talk to somebody else and try to come up with a solution that will work for both sides. It's interesting. I had a conversation on Facebook recently um, about the Confederate flag. And I said, you know, for Black Americans, it's like the most racist thing you could imagine. But on the flip side, I can understand how some people find it to be... Uh, a historical value is something that represents something for them. And yeah. so, you know, how do you find a happy medium for the two? You know, you keep taking the flag down, which I love, but at the same time, there are people that also have a feeling towards the flag. flag. So how do you, you, how do you reach a compromise with that? You know, I wrote a, I wrote a song too that came out on uh, Stand Up and, it, and it, was, it was also about racism, but again, you know, I'm white, so I don't know that it, but it was, it was based on, um, there's that, uh, the, there's that black police officer who's helping that white KKK member in who is heat stroke, taking right. care of him. Yeah. So powerful. And I just, it just, it, it, so frustrating to me that those who are oppressed and hurting have to rise above and showcase how to be a better person to the haters. And I, I just, I just think that's so powerful and amazing. And then you've, you've, you're tackling all that in your songs and so honest. I know you're winning all sorts of awards for your record too, right? So. Yeah, I've gotten a couple of nominations. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah, so it was, so my favorite song off of the album is the I Am song because, you know, when I go into the recording studio, I don't play an instrument. So I'm, I still need to learn the keyboard that I bought a couple of years ago, I was <laughs> sitting in the box in the house, but, um, and I wanted to do a different style of song about racism. And so we did it in a singer songwriter vibe. You know, I work with my music producer, Alexi von Guggenberg. And when I go there, I like, I tell him what instruments I want and I want a singer songwriter vibe. And he put something together and, and I sang it, I did it in one take, which it never happens with right? me. Right, that's a rarity for sure. It's, it's a very rarity. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that, that's it, that's it. And, and, and he did his thing on my song. So, um, but when you look at our world today, and then I look at this album, and it's, it's so funny, the uh, DC chapter of the Grammys had this thing on Facebook yesterday, and they called it, where do you go from here? Where do we go from here? And then Oprah had something called, where do we go from here? It's almost like I had a premonition. Um, to do this album, but I, I'm so shocked. Oh, and then I forgot I forgot one of the main songs, We Kneel, uh, that's on there, which is about the Colin Kaepernick kneeling and um, have a music video with that one, which expresses everything, but with the police brutality. Um, and it's just, last night I, I burst into tears and I try not to cry about the situation, but. I'm a very spiritual person, so sometimes you sit and you wonder, you know, some, I'll ask the question, what is it that black people have done to deserve so much hate? You know, is it truly about the skin color? Because skin color can't do anything to you. Yeah. Is it stereotype? Is it fear? But in the end, what have we done uh, to, to cause so much hate and fear and anger. And obviously we know that hate, racism, bigotry, all that stuff is taught. It's not something that you're born with. Um, and why would somebody take so much energy um, to hate somebody? And it was an honor. And I, I burst into tears because it was a, uh, one of the other videos and another black young man that was um, killed by police officers can't remember his name right now, but um, he's a, a young kid that used to play the violin. For kittens. Yeah, and for kittens, yeah. And the way he died, and it's just gruesome. It's gruesome. And so how much more can people take? And the thing is also, if we didn't have video cameras, 
where would we be, where would we be today? We wouldn't know about half of this stuff. And there's probably more cases of these things happening before the video cam cameras came into play. Um, and then more and more stories are coming out. It's exhausting. exhausting. That's what that's what has happened. It's exhausting. It's heartbreaking. It's sad. It's heartbreaking. You know, even in our own um, Grammy community, <laughs> this past year. I've had to unfriend, I've had to block friends because their, their persona just came out because of, of a Black Lives Matter movement. And they start saying racist stuff or ignorant stuff. You know, I just tell people, look, if you're racist, just let it out. So don't <laughs> fester in your system, just let it out. Because some people teeter between, well, yeah. I'm not really, but I'm going to say this, blah, blah. I, I don't have time for that. You know, I'm tired of trying to explain Black Lives Matter. I don't know if Black Lives should have said Black Lives Matter too. It, 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 you can explain it to your blue in the face. People are still, well, all lives matter. Yes, but until Black Lives Matter, yeah. we say that. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It's like, okay, I'm done trying to explain it. I can't explain it anymore, you know? Well, you didn't have to either. Do you know right. what I mean? <laughs> you fall on your shoulders all the time. It's not a black person problem. It's a white person problem, <laughs> you know? It's our problem. And I, I feel like I'm just trying to play right now with the idea of embracing my ignorance. Hmm. And I think, I think we're, you know, when, because I realized so much, so many mistakes that do come from white people and white fragility is, is ignorance. It's just ignorance. Mm -hmm. And education and communication will be hopefully a big, a big healing yes. opportunity, right? Yes. So I'm, I, like, I, didn't even, I, I didn't even realize, I didn't even realize for so many years, you know? It's like four right. or five years I've been on this journey of starting to understand that things aren't equal. <laughs> you know, I thought, you know, just being a woman was enough of a struggle. Right. And, then I, and then I realized the black woman's struggle. And it's like, holy fuck. Right. You know, you know what first got me is when Trayvon Martin was shot. And I thought to myself, what if my little girls were boys and they were black? And I immediately was like, <gasps> right. And that was it. Then, then it was like all very clear for me that you, being scared every time mm -hmm. you love leaves the house just because the color of the skin is 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 not okay <laughs> like no it's 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 insanity you would think that being in the 21st century we would be in a different place well, i can't believe like 50 years ago even with martin luther king you think we've yeah. come a long way but we are not now you know a lot of people like to talk about trump and blah 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 Trump is not responsible for me in, 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 in this part here. Racism has always been here. So he can't blame, be blamed for the entire racist thing. But he has emboldened the people that the, the closet racists to come out and say whatever they want. And the ones that are already here, he's emboldened them to say, oh, we're coming out. We're going to do whatever we want. We've got this president that's going to back us, that's going to call us great guys, and we're just wonderful people. So that's where, he, that's where he is to blame for a lot of the uprising that's going on. Today, I'm not a fan. We'll never be a fan of that. <laughs> There's no way in hell. Um, I'm almost, you know, spiritually speaking, thankful that he is, he is draining the swamp. It's just not right. how he meant it, you know? Right. He's just showcasing everyone's shit just coming to the top, you know? Exactly. Um, but I also do believe um, that Trump was me meant to be president. Because what it, although we've had all this negative stuff, a lot of people that were closed-minded about racism or they didn't believe it existed, now they're in shock. They're having heart attacks all over the place because they're like, oh my God, I never knew I lived in a world like this. So their yeah. eyes have been opened. Yes. So many different things um, in our world. And now more people are standing up to a lot of that stuff. Now a lot of more people are protesting. One of the things I kept telling my mom, I said, you know what, with all this police brutality, the one thing you can never see is like the good cops standing against the black cops, uh, the bad cops. So 
all of a sudden, you know, this past couple of months, they're now starting to rise up and say, okay, these cops are bad. You can't put us all, lump us all in that same category, which I don't. You know, I praise some cops. I praise the good cops because you can't lump everybody together. But the bad cops have to go. They have to, it's gotta, there's got to be reform. You've got to just, you know, get rid of them, fire them, and remove their pensions. This thing about firing and not and still allowing them to have them. leave even? What the fuck is administrative leave? <laughs> um, it doesn't make sense. Um, but, but... I think black people also need to take responsibility for certain things. I, I don't use the N word, but some black folks have taken the word and they say, well, we've changed it to mean something else. What they don't understand is that you will never change this word. The, me the word means what it means. You could try to put an A at the end, an E or whatever. It's never going to change. So when another black person uses it, I believe that for me, that's self-hate and that they've been conditioned to believe that's who they are. Because if somebody repeats a word often enough, you're going to start believing in that word. And that's what uh, the black Americans and the Hispanics, everybody uses it. Um, that's what they're, they're doing now. It's self-hate. Right. We are in the 21st century. No one should be using that word. You know, people get mad when, um, so when a rapper or whoever, not just rappers, people that put the N-word in the song and then somebody that's non-black sings it, they get upset. Right. Why are you getting upset? You put it in the song for people to sing and you're gonna tell them they can't sing that song because of their, they're a different race. So I'm totally against that. If you put it in there, you're telling people they can sing it, that it means nothing. So, you know, these actresses and actors or reality stars start doing on TikTok or whatever, and they get mad at them. But why? Mm. You are embracing this world, word, you're putting it out into the world, and then you're getting upset and saying, well, you're not allowed to use it. No, that is not how it works. Interesting. We need to stop using that word in the Black communities. We need to stop using it in every single community. That's how we can work to change the world as well. Um, I mean, I've had my own instance, incidences of racism as my family was born in Haiti. I was born in Washington, DC. My grandfather's Lebanese. So I'm just like, would be considered the Haitian terrorist or whatever. That's, that's, that's the worldview. And when I was in college, you know, some, some people, or even in high school, they would say, well, you, you're not like them. You don't even look like them. Don't they eat dirt cookies or mud cookies? And don't they have AIDS and da, da, da. So I dealt with all of that. But I'm saying, like, you don't even understand Haiti. Have you even looked at Haiti? Have you looked up Haiti? We have some beautiful, you know, the blue ocean and the sandy white beaches and beautiful people and fantastic food. And I had to fight through that. And I've also had the reverse of racism in the sense that when I was in college, uh, we, there was a local bar that we used to go to. And one of my friends, guy friends, was white and we were dancing on the dance floor very close and stuff like that. And this local black guy pushed us and was telling us not to do that. We kept dancing and he kept instigating. The next thing you know, the black guy pushed me in my face, uh, pushed my friend, beat him up with his friends, left, came back to shoot us, went to go get a gun. Luckily the police was there and I ended up having, my, my friend ended up going to um, the hospital for a lot of stitches. And then I ended up going to court because he was afraid to, and they gave him six months in jail plus because he had some priors. Um, so I've been on both sides of the spectrum when it comes to whether it's a black person not wanting to see you with a white person or the, the idea that with the Haitian thing. Um, and I've had, you know, even white people that are saying, well, Natalie, you're not like them. Yeah, or that's what I was hearing before yeah. your high school story. I'm like, it just is so... Yeah, or in high school, it was like, well, they would call me the white girl because I didn't sound like them because I was raised a different way. I mean, from preschool to about fifth grade, I went to an all French school, which is totally different. That's all another topic altogether. And so when I got into high school, it was a, a totally different experience for, for me. But um, I used to have friends, and I think about this all the time now in high school, where they used to use the N-word all the time, I, some white friends that I have. Um, and back then I didn't really think about how hurtful and hateful it was. 
because they would just say it all the time when talking about different black people. And then that per particular friend found me on Facebook. And we were, and then we chatted for a while. And then when a lot of things started to get bad in the United States again, I reminded her of that. I said, do you remember saying all that stuff? And we, da, 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 well, I don't remember that. And da, da, da. I was like, okay. Uh, then she, she went, off right away. went off on a tangent. Then I said goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I, 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 now I just think about it all the time. I said, basically, where do we go from here? Because I believe it's going to get worse before it gets better. Mm. It just is. Because even though we have a lot of these marches, um, a lot of these protests, I've even participated in them, um, things are changing a little. But there's, there's so many bigger things that need to happen. Um, so you, you, we need to be able to have conversations without yeah. getting upset. You can put emotion in it. I don't have a problem with it. But you, there's got to be a way to compromise. The thing that we can't compromise is on the hate. We can compromise and say, let's learn how to love one another, work with one another, make America great again, um, so that the future generation doesn't have to deal with the crap that we're dealing with now. You have COVID. People don't want to wear masks. Oh, you're taking their rights away. Listen, if you don't want to wear the damn mask, sign something that says if you get it, you don't get treatment. I'm all good for that. Go, do your thing. And if you bring it home to your family and you get them sick, they don't get treatment either. I'm all good for that. But I'm going to be a responsible individual. Even when I went protest, we were, I had my mask on. I was, I was like, okay. We're only going to stay here for 30 minutes to an hour, and then we're getting back, and then we're going to bathe ourselves in all kinds of bleach or whatever, um, <laughs> and make sure sanitize our bodies. Um, but at least I was responsible enough to do But these people that now cases are rising, we might go back to the same thing that we locked down or whatever, although Trump doesn't want that. Um, go back to the same thing. We need to learn how to work together. And, and the other thing is people are lazy. They refuse to do research. I can't tell you how many people will post stuff on Facebook and it's not true. And I'll go and I'll Google and I'll say, here's the link. That's not true. Maybe you should do your research. Yeah. You know, a lot of, stuff. a lot of conspiracy theories um, hit the emotional reaction button and that's what draws people in. It's not data or scientific. It's like, yes, okay, I feel... <laughs> you know, angry, or I've got a cause, or I've got a reason to be upset, or you can't tell me what to do, but, you know, I was also thinking, um, like, lately, I've been thinking about how in, in moments with police, who, because I've been trying to find my compassion as well for the police, even though there's no forgiveness on my part, like, nothing is excused, but I, I'm trying to kind of comprehend how if you're dealing with someone you've pulled over and then they just they just want to disregard everything you say and be angry with you from the second right. you pull up and you don't know if they have a gun or not right. you know, again there's no reason you should shoot or whatever uh but i'm also realizing that it's a system that's been set up in place already where black people and people of color have been treated so poorly all the time mm -hmm. that they're immediately the whole system is set up that they are they're not treated equally. So of course they're going to be reactionary and angry. And I just, I feel like, again, it's a white, white person problem that a black person that gets pulled over and is angry and is like, why are you pulling me over? Instead of saying, yes, here's my license. That's what I do, right? Yes, here's my license, whatever. <laughs> but I, my life isn't threatened. So I'm not immediately defensive in that situation because no one I know has been killed or shot just because they're a mom in North Van. You know? <laughs> so you know i think i think that um the systems run so deep you know 400 years of systems and just like there's so you're right like the change has to have like the changes i think the ide ideologies are shifting so right. now putting them into action is going to be the challenge like you say it's going to get worse before it gets better because it's going to be bumpy as shit oh and, yeah you know and shit's going to come up and people are going to be upset and um, it's going to be for the better.
for the better. All of this, we're, it's such an incredible time to be alive, really. As hard as it is, so much can come from this. I'm so hopeful. Yeah, um, I mean, I had a conversation with a friend the other day, and she was explaining to me how, you know, she gets, she's white, but she gets scared when, you know, when the police stop her. But I said, your situation is different than my situation when I get pulled over. You're going to end up living. I may end up dying. That's the, that's the point that I think you need to see. We can all be nervous, but how they react to me is going to be totally different. I may live to not see another day, which I'm trying to do. And there's so many videos out, uh, out there with police brutality. And you're just, you're just shot. Some of them are just, I mean, one video I recently saw, they knock on the man's door because the alarm went off. They didn't even, the man was in his boxers. It was his house. Right. They handcuffed him. Handcuffed him. And he was like, why are you doing this to me? I'm in my own house. Yeah. Well, this, that, da, da, da. You know, or another one I recently watched where the man was, I don't know, he was just walking around. They broke his arm. He wasn't even doing anything. Yeah. So, you know, when, when, are, you, when are they going to start vetting um, police, the police department, giving, uh, taking away their pensions? Um, because this is going, they have to get serious about this because it's not serious enough. You know, a lot of police officers are walking off the force. I say, bye-bye, go. Yeah, see ya. Yeah, see ya, good riddance, we don't need you. Yeah. Um, that, will, that will allow for room to better police officers, better people to get those jobs and to actually enforce things the way that they're supposed to enforce things. You know, people don't have to die. I, I asked somebody, why can't they do, if they're going to shoot, why, why not shoot to injure? Right, shoot in the leg or whatever. Or let the person go. You have their information. Go to their house. Get them later. But these people, they just want to kill. It's like kill, 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 kill. The That's demand, all the yeah, the demand for respect is much more important right. than life, right? You, yeah. I got. I'm strong and important. And if you don't know that, oh, you know, and it's obviously it's not even like real. If you need to shoot someone to feel powerful, that's not real. I mean, exactly. not that that fixes anything, but exactly. that's not real. And then you have these people that are just randomly, that they don't have anything better to do that are calling um, the police on people, like the guy that was sitting in the park, the bird watcher. Um, he, he was sitting in the park, yeah. his own business. He just asked the woman to put the dog on a leash, which she was supposed to do it. And she goes off on a tangent and calls the police. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. So you now know? these yeah. people have found out their lives are being ruined, and I frankly don't care. I, I'm, I'm not. I would never be complacent in that arena if that ever happened to me. I'm like, yeah, well, she's gonna get everything taken. <laughs> you know what I think is is uh, for me the little joke is she thinks she's not racist because she called him an. I think you know in her mind, oh, right. an African American man, right. not right. a black man, but an African American man is here. <laughs> you know, like that's <laughs> extension of her belief system not being racist so exactly. i do want to clarify though that the i was saying that that sense of power is not real right the, the gun is very real and that's what's real. that's what's very wrong so yeah, so yeah so we're here we are 2020 and then i guess i was gonna ask too how like how you um handle this and what inspires you but we started with that because you yeah. are an artist and the true you ask yourself the truth and mm. And it comes, and now here you are, a year later, and all your songs are extremely relevant because yep. the truth, the truth came to you. You know, the people are ready to hear it. It's, it yeah, no, I mean, I've shared, a, yeah, the, when I share the videos, the people are like, oh, Natalie, that's great, and stuff like that, which is very nice. I'm, and you know, I'm just trying to get the word out. I've, I've uh, sent some of the videos to a lot of different places, trying to promo, trying to get the word out, trying to be an activist, trying to do the whole thing, um, or trying to, to trying to stay sane um, during this time. And, and it's hard. It's difficult. It's exhausting. I, my, a friend of mine, we, we, we text every day, and we're just talking about how this is emotionally draining. And, and, and I think a lot of it also has to do um, with, how shocked we are at the behavior of some of the people we called friends. It's just, it's shocking, it's deplorable, it's, it's all kinds of things. And it's just like, oh my God, I never thought that this person would be this way. But I mean, you live and you learn, you never truly know people. 
um, some people just give you the surface of who they are. Some people give you exactly who they are, like you, me, and other people I can tell you who would. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> they, they're, they're straight shooters. Um, yeah, that's yeah, right. That's and then, there, you know, what I've noticed also, the people that have stayed silent. You know, I've taken, I've taken note of that. Um, and some people just choose to stay silent. They might fight their own ways. Um, there are those, and there are those that are, I'm just not going to say anything. This is my career. I don't want anybody uh, to not like me because, or my music because of the way that I think. And I'm like, screw that. I don't, I, I, I want somebody to like me as an artist because they know who exactly I am. You know, I'm not shy about things <laughs> to express them. And if people don't like that, then that's on them. They don't have to be my friend, but I'm not going to change for anybody. That's that's my brand, basically. You like it? We can all be that, right? right? <laughs> you so like it? Yeah. <laughs> you like it? You stay. You don't buy. That's yeah. you know, whatever. Um, yeah. I'm hopeful then that all these people that are really struggling with with grasping the reality of the situation, <laughs> um, even as we unfriend and block them, that they're, <laughs> that they're learning, that they're still learning. Do you know what I mean? I, you know what? I, I hope so. Some of them were lost cause, but um, yes. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, some of them are just like, uh, no, what? Okay, okay, you lose it. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, and 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 what's bad thing? Some of them, the stuff that was coming out of their mouths, they're just, and then you confront them, and they're like, no, that's not what I said. No, you're the racist. That's what I would get. You're the racist. I'm like, really? Are you? Are you? you I, huh? Uh -uh. Okay, well, okay, boo boo, bye bye. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, reverse racism as an idea is a whole other topic that we probably should unpack another time. <laughs> right, no, don't, 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 don't. That's that's not, not to quiet you, but I just know that we've been talking a long time. <laughs> no, I, I get it, no, I agree, that's a whole nother topic. Holy crow, holy crow. Is that an okay sentence? I'm learning all about all certain <laughs> things that, that no, I, I got to say. <laughs> 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 no, that's, I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning. I mean, what, what, the, I mean, at the same time, the world can be a little too sensitive on, like HBO wanting to take away um, "Gone with the World," or "Gone, Gone with, Gone the, with the Wind," "Gone with the Wind." Um, that's taking it too far. Well, they brought it back, but at the start of the movie, now they've got a five-minute context. They've got a, 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 a an educated film, you know, historian. Right. Um, which discusses why this movie has been controversial since they made it. And I don't think I realized that it was controversial when I was a child even, you know? Me neither. Yeah. But I guess it's always been controversial for the, for the romanticism of slavery, really. True. Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, and the whole Aunt Jemima thing. I can't tell you how many discussions I've had over that. And people uh, are, oh my God, how can they do that? Did, people have been fighting to get that name removed for years. Yeah, I didn't even... Yeah, I just thought of it myself, like, about a month ago, I was like, wait a minute, Aunt Jemima's, that's not okay. And then when, <laughs> when, it, when it came out, like, two weeks ago, I said to my husband, look, yay! <laughs> you know? and, and so. people, some people said, well, oh, but she made billions, and they gave her a start. I said, mm, let me let me get this. She was a slave. She was taken from her family, probably beaten and raped. Yeah. But you think this helped her, this made up for this stuff. I was just like, how does it exactly, does that work in your mind? Yeah, how does that compute? How did you know she got any money? And why didn't they just use her name? <laughs> and, 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 but they called her Aunt Jemima. So, yeah. they're, they're, you know, and there's some cartoons they want to take off the air. Um, yes. I think, I think some things they're just going a little too far. Well, um, they can come back. They can come back, Natalie. You know, yeah. like, as people learn and grow, yeah. You know, I watch, I've been watching Friends with the kids, and it's, it's, it was part of the changing times, but they make fun of women all the time. Oh, that's so girly. Oh, you're wearing pink. Oh, what are you, a girl? And, and they wouldn't write that stuff into shows at all anymore. But I'm able now to say to my kids, you know, that's, those, that's when women were in on the joke that we were less than. Right. We're not in on that joke anymore. No. It's no. not a joke anymore. Um, it's still a really enjoyable show. Lots of great writing. We really enjoyed it. And they were helping change the conversation because, you know, Ross still does wear pink and Chandler is, does girlish things. <laughs> you know, so they were part of that change. But yeah, I think if we can look back eventually at these, you know, 
forms of communication with with better perspective then that's okay but for now we don't need to be influencing people with crack right no i agree i agree with that 100 percent. good because i was oh, just what a world. <laughs> oh what a world I'm here for you. I'm here for you. so <laughs> what a world indeed so I'm going to ask too, um, when I share this, are you okay if um, people ask you questions or whatever in the comments below? Yeah, they can ask you. Too. Yeah, and you don't have to answer. And if there's, if there's any, um, anything you want me to delete or people that are, you know, rude or their ignorance is too much, yeah, not that I know, I don't know, maybe I do not right. feel like that. I have no problem removing that unless it's an important conversation you're interested in having. No, no problem. Yeah. I'm up for it. Thanks. I think I, I think I'm an expert now on the argument <laughs> side, yeah. or or the nice communication, learning from a, one another side. I can do it all. <laughs> educating. Uh, the educating. The educating. The educating. I've really enjoyed our time together today. Thank you so much. Did I know. Thank you for asking me. Um, it's nice to be a part of something. Yeah, it's nice to. Yeah, we're. I'm hoping that we can be a part of like the change. Yes. You know. Yes, and the, and the healing, and the healing, and the, and the healing. healing. Amen to that. Yes. So, I'm not sure that I'll see you in February at the Grammys this year, because who knows if they're happening. But well, I asked somebody, one of the trustees that I'm friends with, and she said for now their plan is to have it. Yeah. Um, and they may, but they also have a plan A and plan B, but I don't know what those are. Maybe so if they did it outside, I'd feel a little safer and. Everyone had a little square they had to stand in. Like, <laughs> and they're like, hey, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so I, yeah. So I don't, over there. Yeah. what are you doing? Uh -huh. Yeah, so I don't know what their ideas are, but you know, it's a money making thing. So, yeah, um, right. So they're yeah, still, totally. yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Well, yeah, we'll be in touch and um, I'll let you know when this is going up. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Natalie. Thank I you. I appreciate it. Me too. Be safe. You too. Be our our doctor uh, in BC, and we're down to fourteen new cases yesterday. One death. Like we're our numbers are really low, but she says be safe, be kind, be calm. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Have a good day. All right. Same to you. Bye. 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 Bye.